Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 7681198 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. The passage that was the basic passage of this study, we took it from Exodus chapter 20. Do you remember? Exodus 20. In Exodus 20, which we wanted to read from verse 23 or 22 to 26, that was the passage that we took. But I would like to say to you that Exodus 20 what most majority of people know Exodus 24 is the Ten Commandments. Abi? Because Exodus 20 from verse 1 to verse uh, uh, 17 or 18 is talking about the Ten Commandments. But I want you to know that that was not what God started with. The meeting that culminated to where we are reading actually started in Exodus chapter 18, chapter 19. In chapter 19, God had spoken to Moses and said, I want to meet with my people, sanctify them so that they can come together. I will come down. I will unveil myself before their eyes so that from that day forward they will believe and they will never go back to sin again. But if you read your Bible very well, I want you to quickly read chapter 19 of Exodus before you go to chapter 20. In chapter 19 of Exodus, the Bible says in verse 16, no, verse 15, and he said to the people, be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders, lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And the mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke. And God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon the Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. On the, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount. And the, Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth on them. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to the mount, for you have charged us, saying, Set bounds upon the mount and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down. Thou shalt come up, thou, Aaron with you, but let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the mount, unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spoke to them. So chapter 20, that meeting was about to take place now. 
But look at chapter 20, verse 18. Can you, are you there? So, verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Did you understand? Now, see what they now said. This is the problem. They said unto Moses, Speak you, you, you speak with us. We will hear you. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your face that you say not. Mm -mm. And the people stood afar off. He said, mm -mm, mm -mm. And Moses drew near to the thick cloud. That thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel. Did you see the trouble now? What is the problem? Who knows the problem now? God wanted all of them to do what? To come. He wanted to relate directly with them. Because unless you are meeting God directly, you cannot become anything for God. Hey my God, are you following me? Because they stood afar off. They said, let God not speak to us. Let Moses be preaching to us. Some of you, you prefer preachers than to go direct. Some of it, you think it's a very big thing just to sit down and keep hearing, hearing from one conference to another conference to another conference and conference and conference and you're always there. That may look good to you, but that's not God's will. What is God's will? He wants you to come. If this conference will succeed, the success of this conference is when you rise to come to that place where you and God you are talking mouth to mouth, face to face. That's, that's when this conference will have achieved what God wanted. But if after we finish preaching, you went by and say, well, we thank God for that. Those brothers, they can preach. Let them be preaching to us. When are they coming again? Will they come again next year? When it is like that, there's little result. But if someone say, ah, where that brother went, and you are working so much in his life, I want to go there. God say, come along. But because they stood afar off, and only Moses went into that thick darkness, That the darkness is again that secret place. When he entered, he said, <laughs> he has entered darkness. Oh, that's what they were saying. But this man has entered into the glory. So the difference between Moses and the rest of Israel, this is where it started. So the Bible said, only Moses knew the way of the Lord. But the rest of the Israel, they don't know his way. They only saw his acts. That is the problem. And that is why it was difficult. Whatever Moses was preaching to them, they have no capacity to obey. Because when God should have appeared to them, they stood afar off. So now, as a result of that, God was now again making another proposal. And look at the proposal. Chapter 20 from 23. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon your burnt offerings, your peace offerings, your sheep, your oxen, 
in all places where I record my name, I will come unto you and I will bless you there. I will bless you. And if you will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hill stone, for if you lift up your stool on it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Praise the Lord. So God said, look, I want to come to you. I want to meet with you. Make me an altar. So, our first discussion, which we were looking at in most of your classes, we're saying, what is an altar? And we said an altar is simply a meeting point with God. What's an altar? A meeting point with God. An altar is a platform, a ground, a place, a meeting point where you and God can do what? Can interact. Now please hear me. God is demanding that any man that wants to become something in God's hand should create, should build a meeting point where he can come to her or to him. Does that make sense to you now? Eh? Is it complicated? Who is not following me? Alright, you are following. So, the altar is where God can come down and meet with me. But listen now, it is dependent on me to provide that place. So when Jesus said, when you pray, go where? Into your closet. Shut the door. Once you have shut the door and you made it secret enough, I will come down there. Your father who is in the secret and who sees in secret. Did you understand that now? So, who creates that secret closet? Who? It's me. It's me. It's me. So, the first question you'll be asking before you leave is, where have I created for God to meet with me regularly? Have I created any meeting point where any time I get there, I say, Oh, Father, I have come. And I say, Yes, I'm also here with you. Is there a space like that? Is there a time like that? Is there a particular point at which God regularly meets with you? If God does not have a regular meeting point with a man's life, where will God make him? Where will God deal with him? Where will God do something in his life? So that's the first question. We will not close this meeting this afternoon until you are able to answer it. When it is time to pray, we are going to deliver and say now, Lord, I have been thinking, I have not created a meeting point between me and you. I want to create it from this meeting. Are we together? Can I tell you that Jesus had his own meeting point with God? Eh? Mark 1. Somebody should quickly turn to Mark 1 for us. Mark 1, verse 35. Verse 35. Mark 1, verse 35. Read it. Oh, nobody is oh, early in the morning. Yes. Now, someone will say, can't we pray anywhere? 
Why can't he just pray anywhere? Why did he need to rise up early in the morning? And let's read that scripture again. David, read it again. In the morning. Rising up a great while before day. Yes. He went out. And departed. Ah, did you see that? He rose up very early in the morning. A great while before day. Before daybreak. He has woken up. And what did he do? He came out. And then he departed. Into a solitary place. He took a journey. To the place. And when he got there. The Bible said he did what? He prayed. Some of these things that we could see Jesus practice. We, because we thought we are very spiritual. We thought I said, no way, you can actually pray anywhere. Poor of us. Terrible. As if you are sneezing. So that's where, that's why you don't have any secret place where God meets you. That's why there is no designated solitary place where when you get there and you say, Lord, I have come. You say, yes, I've seen you. I'm also here. We can discuss. Jesus had specific meeting point with God. I will explain to you that he prayed all the time. He carried the presence of God everywhere. But he had specific meeting point when it's time to pray. Am I communicating with somebody? Let's go furthermore. Read Luke 6, verse 12. Verse 12. It came to pass in those days. He went down to, into a mountain for sightseeing. Huh? He went down to the mountain to play. Talk to me now. What did the Bible say he did? He went out into a mountain to do what? To pray. Why can't he pray here? He needed a secret place. Designated. A meeting point with God. He went out to the mountain to pray. Yes. Can you say that? So he went to this mountain. To pray. And how long did he stay there? All night. All night. He and Baba. They were discussing. And this discussion was all night. Now, you know my question is. that What was Jesus looking for? After all he is the son of God. Does he need to pray? That's what touches me. If Jesus. Will go and spend all night praying. For God to use him. Lungwana. Can you be sleeping all night. And expect the same result. <laughs> what are we talking about? Jesus. Whom the Bible says God gave anointing without measure. He will go. Away from his uh, abode where everybody knows him. Say, let me go and meet God job. And he went to a mountain. And there, all night, pray to God. So when he was coming down, and he started calling those disciples to follow him, you wonder why 
authority was in his voice that those people could not resist. Some of you are saying, hey, disciples are not serious. Disciples are not serious. They are not following somebody. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You like this. You are not followable. A man that has no secret place where God is dealing with him, can God tell people to follow him? Eh? The effectiveness of the secret place we saw with Jesus. Let's take another uh, two more passages on Jesus before we go on. Because I'm talking about building it. You have to build it. You have to develop it. You are not too young to start developing and cultivating, you know, a friendship with Jesus. Creating that space where I say, look, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going. They say, where are you going? I say, I'm going. I'm going to meet with the Lord. Say, the Lord is everywhere. The Lord is so omnipresent. Uh. When you want to meet God, enter your closet. Shut the door. Why must you shut the door? To make it secret. And to shut out everybody. Shut out your friends. Some of you, you thought you are in a secret place. You are in a secret place. But your phone is ringing. When you are praying, you thought you are praying. But your phone is, is vibrating. <laughs> then you are still praying. No? Then you bring it out. Is that man praying? What is he doing? He's playing. He's playing with his phone. I go, sir, I thought you are here in this. I thought you are here for me. I didn't know that you are still connected. And you cannot connect with the world and not disconnect with God. Some of you, you have that bad habit that you leave your phone vibrating, and then uh, when text has come in, pee, 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 pee. Look, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let me quickly check my text. For what? Has text made you anything? Talk to me, please. All the texts you have received in life, what have they made you? Not. They've not added to your life. And sometimes the text that took you away from the presence of God is a useless text. And by the time you have already come out of the closet because you are checking and set, to go back to heaven is impossible. Then you dress up, you are ready now to go for work. And you are now going to face the devil, the, 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 the fowler, who has set trap for you. And you couldn't wait for heaven to inform you and say, concerning where you are going, there is a trap that has been set like this. Don't go that road. Take this way. You miss that because you were answering an answer. For Jesus, he went to a month. He went to where there's no internet. Where connectivity is completely so it's shorty. Hallelujah. Now go to chapter 11. I'm just showing you for Jesus that he built it. Is that okay? So that you don't say, ah, they say we should build an altar. Hey, we don't know what to do. We know what to do. Jesus did it. And we are seeing how he did it. That a great while before they, before they, he left to be alone with his father. Chapter 11. Are you in verse 1? Eh? Read. 
And it came to pass. David, yes, keep reading. Keep reading. Yes, sir. As he was praying in a certain place. Yes. Uh -huh. Wait there. There's two things I want to note here. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, in a certain place, did you understand that now? There is a certain place. Don't make your own place of prayer uncertain. Are we together? Eh? Don't let your own place of prayer be anywhere, anyhow. It is a habit that Jesus developed because he knew the value of creating a meeting point with God. But now, there's something else. And can somebody read that from NIV? You've been reading King James, isn't it? Read NIV for me. Chapter 1, I mean chapter 11, verse 1, NIV. Quickly, quickly. Uh -huh. When he finished, uh -huh. wait, wait. I don't know whether I can show you the picture. That Jesus was praying in a certain place. Why he was praying? What were the disciples and anybody who want to see him? What were they doing? They waited. They know that you can't talk to him until he has finished praying. Hey, you are not hearing me. Jesus had a time to pray and he will not cut his time of prayer short until he has finished. And I was wondering, what does he, what does he mean to finish praying? Which means there are times that Jesus will go to the place of prayer and he's discussing with his father. They are talking, they are talking, they are talking. And this discussion is on and on and on and on and on. And sometimes it will take all night. Are you understanding? And he will not leave until he has finished. Until when Baba said, okay, uh, concerning what we are saying, I think we can stop it for today. Uh, you can come back tomorrow for us to continue. And you can go and do the other things you want to do now. He said, oh, so you mean I can go now? I say, yes, yes, it's all right. That's when he stood up. When he had finished. Do you know how many of you never finish your prayer? Jesus had the secret, not only the secret of secret praying, the secret of finishing. There are some of us that God has just started telling you something serious. God hasn't finished talking. Huh! I need to go now. And then you jumped up. I'm going to say, see this boy. He let me speak. Where is he going? And then sometime, you have not finished. There's a body that God has laid on your heart and you are still wrestling with it. The thing is not yet released. Then abruptly, you stopped. Sometime, as you are in the place of prayer, where God is meeting with you, a scripture, the word of God just opened. And God is just beginning and he's beginning to open that scripture to you. And he's beginning to speak to your life. Then somebody called you. Charlie! I 
And what did you do? You jump out. You say, when I, when I come back, I'll continue that Bible study. How many of you were able to get back to that spirit of revelation? It has disappeared forever. Because you don't understand that the, the thing we are talking about is communion with God. It's a meeting with God. We are not just speaking to the atmosphere. We are not just make, making some empty statement. We are talking to the Father who is in the secret. He is there. Hey, Prof, come, come here. Come here. Come here. Come up here. Now, can, can Professor, me and him, we are talking. Eh? You are telling me about something. We are discussing. Eh? And as we are discussing, Moses, come, come here. Now, as we are talking, you are telling me something about this program. You are explaining things and all that. You are talking to me. What is the normal thing for Moses to do if he wants to talk to me? He has to wait until you finish it. Now, how will you feel while you are talking? You have not finished saying what you are saying. I said, oh, Moses, how are you? <laughs> eh? <laughs> what are you doing? It's okay. Thank God. You know, it's all right. And then I put my hand on Moses and we walked away. <laughs> now, now, how does he feel? Talk to me. How does he feel? Say, this is terrible. This is rudeness. I'm talking. I'm bearing my heart to him. And do look at this bloody Moses. He just came and took him away. You don't know the trouble. The trouble is that he is disappointed. When next I want to talk to him, will you start telling him? No. He said, he said, I there are many things I want to say. But there's, we are, I know you are busy. I can't start opening my life to you now. Because you will soon walk away. How many times have we done that to God? So that so many things God wants to do in our lives remains unfinished. When he has finished so I found that Jesus not only prayed, he finished praying before he gave attention to anybody else. He gave time. He gave space. He gave concentration. Nobody interrupted his prayer. It is only when he finished praying he will come down. Would you like to develop that kind of relationship with God? Eh? Even as a student, even as a young person, when you are praying, let your friends know that we don't disturb him when he prays. He will not listen to us when he's praying. His phone can ring 30 times. He will not pick it when he is in the place of prayer. In fact, his phone is permanently switched off when he's praying. <laughs> Even if it is for 30 minutes, you decide to give God. That 30 minutes must finish. That's how to build the kind of altar we are talking about. Is that okay? So let's ask. Do you understand what that altar is all about? Eh? A meeting point with God. And where is it? In the secret place. Where there is no interruption. And you will be willing to make yourself available to God as long as he is willing to speak to you. But let me point the next point there before I leave. When he had finished. 
Now, some of yours, in the name of being over spiritual, you are over spiritual. You never finish praying. So when it is time to go to class, to go and teach, they say we are looking for him to come and teach in class. They say he's still praying. That is disorderliness. And that is why you actually don't have a proper order. The reason is because you have over spiritualized your carelessness. Yes. Jesus finished praying. When he had finished, he could take questions. He could talk to his people. Isn't it? When he had finished, he could come down on the mount and talk to the people. So there should be the principle of finishing. It is not spiritual life, uh, spirituality to say, well, I can, I can never finish my prayer. <laughs> You know, when I see people like that, it's just pretense. There's nothing there. There's a point at which the body that you carry to the place of prayer has finished. And God said, you can go now. And you yourself know it. If you stay longer, there will be nothing more. Isn't it? Uh So, we see that Jesus built his own personal altar and sustained it. He kept at it. Let's take the last passage on Jesus before we go ahead. First look at Luke 22 verse 39. 22, 39 and 40. Up to 41. Who is reading that for me? Can somebody read that from NIV? 39, yes? He went out as usual, yes? Uh Uh-huh. 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 Yes. Good. No, it's okay. We have already got where we are going. Jesus went out as usual. To where? To the Mount Olives. He used to do it. So you see, praying that day, when he said, Father, I wish this call will pass over me. That was not occasional. Jesus had a regular practice of going to that month to settle issues. And today, the issue he needed to settle is the issue of the cross. You see, what some of you are looking at is, it is only the day when somebody proposed to you. Eh? A brother came and just proposed to you and said, I need an answer by next week. Then that's when you now say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Then you now say, ah, look, I'm going somewhere. I, I, I want to pray. And then you are just shaking your head there. Of course, you are likely to come back and say, the Lord said yes. <laughs> because that's not your regular habit. For Jesus, the altar for him is regular. So all the different prayer points, whether it be to go to the cross, or whether it be to choose disciples, or whether to uh, to, to to deal with the devil or whatever. There are only issues of discussion. 
on his own order. Do you understand that now? So, that even as wonderful as that prayer that night was, because that was the critical point in his life, he only did it where? On his regular altar. Where he used to go. Do you get what I'm talking about now? So for Jesus, he had a regular place. The Bible says, and when he was at the place, you know I was wondering, ah, why did he have to get to the place before he would start praying? When he was at the place, then he raised the issue of prayer. And the way he wanted to pray that day, even the, the other the three disciples he took, they couldn't join him. So what did he do? He went a stone's cast and there he knelt down and prayed. He was creating solitude in the place of prayer. So, the first point I've raised this afternoon, which I really want you to cultivate as a young man, the meeting point with God. It should be regular. It should be, he always goes there. He always goes there. He always goes there. When I was a student, there is a place we were on campus and my room was crowded because we have uh, squatters who are also squatting with us in the room. When I really want to pray, when I had not yet known that I could go somewhere else, I'm looking forward to pray in this crowded room. So I cleared my bed. I cleared under the bed. And I will crawl under the bed. Just be under it. So people will be walking up and down in the room. They don't know I'm there. I'm there. God, God, I'm here. God, I'm here. God, I'm here. So when I have prayed, and I think, yes, it's all right now. I will crawl. He said, who is there? Who is there? <laughs> I am there. Even under your bed could be your altar. But when I discover that, even that under the bed is not secret enough. Because some people already now knew that I used to be under the bed. So when they are going to say, Billy, we saw your leg go, come out, oh, come out. We, we have to talk. Don't say you are praying. They are talking. <laughs> Where I'm hearing, oh my God. I knew that my secret place is no more secret. So what did I do? I now look for another corner under the woods. Under the wood. There are certain trees around our campus. Just go there. Stay in between the, 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 the tree. Sit there like that. And I'm praying. I'm studying. Most of the issues that I settled with God that time, they are the result of what you see today. Yes. I was saying, Lord, use me, Lord, use me, Lord, use me, Lord, use me, Lord. I remember one day I was saying, Lord, use me. Use me like you used uh, John Wesley as you used Chastine. Use me, Lord. The Lord said, I don't use people that I don't have. Huh? I said, what do you mean by that? I said, I don't have you yet. I said, you mean you don't have me? He said, yes, I don't have you. You are ambitious. You have your program. You have your project. My prayer change. I said, I said, Lord, take my life. Take my life. Take my life. 
I surrender it to you. I give you my life. I give you my life. I give you my life. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me, Lord. One day I prayed and prayed. I said, fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. God said, where? <laughs> you are full. A man that is full, where are we going to fill him? You are full. You are full of your ideas. Of, ah. I say, God, so this prayer. So the prayer change. Say, Lord, empty me. Break me. Empty me. Break me. Empty me. I don't know how many weeks, months. The only prayer is, Lord, break me. Break me. Lord, pound me. Pound me. Put me in your mortar. Lord, you know, I read the scripture. I said, say the foolishness of a man. Even if you put him in a mortar, he will not leave him. Ah, I said, God, this foolishness that will not allow my life to be used of you. Pound me, Lord. Pound me out. Pound me out. Pound me out. Yeah. So you see, where God makes his man, It's not on the pulpit like this. It is in that sacred place. But when you are not available there, there's nothing for God to walk on. I'm going to talk to you later on today about the quiver of discipleship. But I want to tell you that the quiver of discipleship is only a supplement to what I'm talking about this morning. Having disciples and disciples over your life is good. But it is only secondary to having this place where God makes men. If you don't have this place, you are likely to be a mere copycat. A follow-follow person who doesn't have originality with God. So, you know, as I said, Lord, Lord, man. So there were those words sometime when I go back 40 years, 40 years, I'm looking for that wood. Oh, somebody has caught it. I said, wow, 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 wow. That's where God dealt with my life. And somebody has cut it down. No problem. No problem. Will you deliberately, right from today, have out a meeting point with God? Is that okay? Now, a regular altar that we are talking about need a meeting point, it need a meeting place, and a meeting time. Any time is no time. I say, when do you pray? Say, any time. Uh -uh. That is superfluous. Any time, what did I say? Is no time. Jesus created specific time. Time to be with his father. Time to be alone with God. Hallelujah. Look, would you like to read chapter 18 of John and see how Jesus maintained that place? Chapter 18, verse 1. Uh huh? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see that? So it was clear 
that Jesus had somewhere regularly that he resorted to to seek God. May I suggest to you your spirituality is in question when you have not created a meeting point, a meeting place, a meeting time with God. And when you create that and you say, Lord, I am dedicating this place. It will be my secret place. God say, yes, I will be there. I will be there. Praise the Lord. Are we together to that point? Okay. So, that's all I wanted to emphasize this point on the matter of beauty and order where God can relate with you. Now, I decided to focus on that because I wanted to go now and begin to build it. Is that okay? So, when I use the word build, I'm not saying go and carry wood and do something like this. And they say, what is that? They say, that's my altar. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. Nothing like that. Don't put your money on this. Now you beat this in your house. Does not mean you have any altar. You only have a furniture. <laughs> we don't want furniture. We want a meeting point with God. So that meeting point can be in the corner of your room. It could be in the in the attic of your house. It could be on top of a tree if it will give you enough space. Just go and sit there. Let everybody be looking for you. They will not know you are on the top of the tree. Meeting with God. Anywhere. It could be somewhere. Somewhere where it's exclusive. Quiet, solitary, and between you and God, you are spending time there. Praise the Lord. Some of us say, but some of us, we are mobile. We are always traveling from one place to another, one place to another. In fact, I'm an itinerant preacher. It's all right. It's all right. I don't think you are more itinerant than myself now. I'm also traveling everywhere. But once you have started, to understand the meeting point with God. When you are not at home or at base, once you get to anywhere, the time eh, that you have said, I want to meet with God, 5 a.m. You say, Lord, I need to wake up, 5 a.m. And you get it up. And wherever they lodge you, I was in Belize the other day in a strange place and I wanted to be with God. And I look at the toilet where they lodge me. It has a very big toilet. I said, wow, that's a, that's a good place. Just move in there and you are doing your own prayer. It's no problem. And if you can just go to another corner, sit down there. We are meeting with God. Brothers and sisters, do you understand? Yes. Will you create a meeting point with God from this meeting? Yes. Eh? Where God will begin to deal with you personally. Where God and you will be talking heart to heart. Alright. So, what are the difficulties? What is the result? When men have not built their altars. We saw in your Bible study the example of where altars are abandoned and broken. We saw when Brother Abraham, when he was walking with God, you noticed that everywhere he went, 
he built an altar, isn't it? Isn't it? Anywhere, whenever God appeared to him, he will build an altar and call on God there. And sometimes God has not even yet appeared to him. He will build an altar and as he will call on God, God will appear. So, altars could be because God has just started manifesting himself to you and said, Lord, I want to breathe on this. Or sometimes, you are the one who says, Lord, I am here. Holy Ghost, I am here. Father, I am here. I am here for you. And as you do that, sometimes you may be there for one hour. God has not come home. Don't go away. Stay there. He will come. Hallelujah. He will come. But now when a man has started to abandon his altar, and when we say abandoning an altar or breaking the altar, that means he's beginning now to, to leave out that meeting point. He's too busy to attend that meeting. He's going everywhere and he's no longer reporting to that place of encounter with God. What happens? Number one, spiritual decay. Spiritual decay. Leakages. Leakages in the grace and in the anointing. Compromises of all sorts. And indices of backsliding will begin to set in. Because the place where your fire is kindled, you have abandoned it. The fire that burns you and keeps you running, you have allowed it to die out. Then you start doing things that you never thought you could do before. Then you start practicing things that would be strange simply because the place of the altar is getting abandoned. Let me tell you something though. Do you want me to tell you? Being a preacher does not mean your altar is there. In fact, the real truth is that many, many, many preachers, as their ministry increases, their altar decreases. That's what the devil does. The devil makes you feel that since you are going about preaching, you are also still on the altar. Let me inform you that, you see, where am I here now? Where am I here now? I am the altar, on the altar. Which altar is this? Is this my personal altar? No, this is public altar. This is a congregational altar. This altar, hmm, Thank God for this altar. <laughs> Thank God for this altar. But if I will tell you the truth, there is not much reality on the altar, public altar. Public altar, you don't say the truth of what is happening to you. If we were to pray here now, I say, let us pray. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are great. You are wonderful. You are the mighty God of the universe. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Mighty, 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 mighty is your name. Hallelujah. Now, all of that, have I spoken anything about my life? Eh? Oh my God, you are not talking. Have you ever had any man on the altar who stand and say, Oh God, oh, I'm sorry, yesterday. Yesterday, <laughs> I touched that sister. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever had anybody say like that? Talk to me. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. They are always praising God on this altar. Public altar ministerial altar general altar has very little effect in changing your life 
So God was always demanding, build me a personal altar where I can come to you, where you will offer your own life, your own bond offering. But you see, as more and more as you are a preacher, you could be skipping your personal altar and be performing on the public altar. Very dangerous. This is the quiet reason why great anointing suddenly dissipates. A backslider can preach and preach powerfully. Womanizers can preach powerfully on this public order. And that's what confuses young girls. You see that this man, the thing he was doing with you secretly, bad, but when he comes on the pulpit and he just preach, you just see one strange anointing that is just flowing. I call it strange. He said, ah, but God is still using him. God is still using him. Yes, can I tell you why? If you plug your electric ion into the socket and it gets hot to iron your clothes. Do you remember? When you unplug it, does it get cold that same minute? What happens? The iron is still what? Hot. For some time. You can even actually iron some other clothes with it. <laughs> Isn't it? The only thing is that as time continues, you will be needing to press hard for you to iron anything. And gradually you have to add plenty of energy to even iron and catch it. Am I right? <laughs> what is happening? The fire is gone. The fire on a man of God doesn't go suddenly. It goes gradually. So, somebody can be unplugged from his own personal altar for a while, for a long time, and he's still speaking. And there's still a residue of anointing that he's still using. And you are still blessed. He still says, so say, wow, that's a revelation. Yes, to you it is. To him, it is a... Uh, it is microwave. Let me ask you. Do you microwave fresh food? When you have just cooked something hot from fire. Do you microwave it? What do you microwave? It's cold food. Old stale food. That's what you microwave. The people that make microwave. They make it for lazy people. I'm telling you, those who have become lazy to cook fresh food for their husbands, they say, microwave it, microwave it. So they will just carry something that has been cooked for three weeks that has lost taste. They just put it on, on the microwave. Everything. Then you start eating it. Ah, it's all right. Now, God is not looking for a microwave anointing. God needs anointing that is brewed every day on the altar. On the altar. Personal altar. So when, they, when Moses, uh, I mean, uh, when brother Abraham lost his altar, you see he was telling lies. He was saying, he was saying, when we get there, you know, don't say you are my wife, you know, you are my sister after all. You know, we are, we are brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So when he got there, I said, Hallelujah. Here you meet Sister Sarah. Sister Sarah is my sister. And they were just traveling together. Uh, we, we just passing through here. So, oh, oh, Sister Sarah. And that's how they put their hand on Sarah as if she's a, a, a single lady. And they took her away. And they will have slept with that woman. 
That's a great man of God. Who had left father and mother for ministry. See what he's doing there. When altars are abandoned, anything can happen, even to the great man of God. Are we together? Suddenly you see the man of God who came to preach. Is that a reaching? He's looking at your nose and say, ah, Sister, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I, just, I, I just appreciate you. I just appreciate you. You look nice. You look nice. <laughs> That's it. Something is getting wrong there. Something is you know, it generally now become nice. It's no more spiritual. It's no more carrying the fire. It's just nice. What happens when altars are omitted? Then we saw other people like Lot, who grew under a man of God. He watched the man of God build his own altar and pray. He sometimes assisted to bring the, 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 the offering to the altar. But he never built his own. Is it possible that you are growing up even under men of God? You are good disciples who are always praying. But when they are praying, you are chatting. You see miracles happen, but you don't know how it happens. You never said, why can't I follow him to that place where he's praying? Why can't I push on along with him? And so we found so many, even children of preachers. Their fathers and mothers are spiritual, but they are not. Because the no problem, no problem, no problem. There's a problem. Lot didn't become anything. Joel and Abia, they are the sons of Samuel, but they became nothing. Job's children, their father was always praying on their behalf, but they never had their own personal altar before God. A man that has no altar will soon disappear. So, but we spent so much dealing with how then do we build our altar. And I will just summarize all the issues that we raised there, which would have been a very critical point as I've already looked at how Jesus did his own. But now I want to deal with some practicalities. When you read that Exodus 20, from verse 23 that we read, let me pick it up one by one very quickly. He said, An altar thou shalt make unto me. And we wanted to note that altars are built, they are not ready made. Is that okay? There is no ready made prayer life. You build a prayer life. How did you build friendship with your friend? Sister, stand up, tell me. Yes. How did you how did you make friend with your friend? What did you do? Yes. You talk. You do some things in common. Do you visit each other? You visit each other. Alright. And then you share things together. Okay. And then as uh, is it the first day you met this person that you started sharing the secret of your life with her? Eh? When? When did you start opening the other inner side? As you continue spending time together. And you started saying that this person is trustworthy, Abby. Then you started opening up. And you are also watching how he, she's also talking to you. Because if uh, you are the only one talking 
And when you finish talking, you say, ah, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. <laughs> Are you comfortable talking again? No. Because you now see that he is not opening up his own life. How can I open my own? Friendships are built. And it's built gradually. So also, friendship with God. Relationship with God. The order is also built. How? Gradually. Steadily. Let us establish that quickly so that you won't get confused. Altars to be built and they are built step by step. They are built gradually. So can I tell you now, your prayer life is going to be built little by little. Don't go out of this meeting and say, wow, from today I'm going to have an altar and I will be praying for five hours a day. <laughs> that is the shortcut onto having no altar. Uh, I tell you the truth. You know, I like, uh, you know, I'm very plain and I want you to become it. That's why I'm talking. I'm telling you practically. A prayer life is not sodding. It's built steadily. But the only thing is that it has to be steady. Let's imagine that from this meeting you decide and say, okay, Father, I want to be meeting regularly with you every morning for 30 minutes. Hmm? And you decide and say, okay, and for that 30 minutes, I want to sit, I want to sit at the back of the balcony below. Hmm? And you, you take note that this 30 minutes, I don't want any disturbance. You deliberately switch off your phone. In fact, you don't carry it along so that it doesn't vibrate around you. You just put it somewhere and you're gone. And you sat there 30 minutes with your Bible and prayer. God will accept that 30 minutes. Eh? And he will discuss with you. If you told God 30 minutes, I want to tell you the truth. Though. When it is 30 minutes, God himself said, it's okay. He keeps the time. One time I told God, I said, God, I would like you to wake me up 5 a.m. You know what happens? I don't know how it normally happens. Sometimes when it is one minute to five, one mosquito will just bite me. Yeah. <laughs> And I will wake up. And I will look at time. It is five o'clock. I say, ah, God. So you said the mosquito to wake me up. <laughs> you know. And I found that God was always going to do that. Five. He has knocked me up. Of course, to tell you the truth, at such a time as I did, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just sleep a little more. <laughs> then I will just change and just turn on the bed and put on the next gear. And God says, see you. But you said you want us to talk. I have been waiting for you here. Tomorrow again, he will wake you. God will not say, but I woke you yesterday. You went and slept again. He will wake you. It's a relationship. So when we say building an altar, we are saying building a relationship with God. A friendship. Wherever you go, and I want you to keep note of that. As, as you go and say, oh, Father, thank you yesterday. Thank you, we spoke like this. 
now I'm come, Lord, uh, this is the agenda. And God himself may be the one to say, okay, uh, open your Bible like this. And that goes. Is that okay? Now, don't be ambitious as to make your altar higher than where you have reached. So that's why the Bible said, you should not take make an altar by step. God wants your altar to be at the level that you can access without climbing a stool. Am I communicating with you? God wants a relationship with you at your level. That's why it is in the closet. Do you know what I discovered that when you enter closer, when you are in your in your closet and you have closed your door and all of that, what do you do to your, your dress? Eh? Do you notice that once you lock the door, you are alone in your room now, what do you do? Just remove your dress. Sometimes you are there bare-chested. Am I correct? Or did somebody knocks? Yes, yes. <laughs> You see, that is the point. When it is in your closet, God did not mind if you do like this. When you undress yourself, because you are there with God alone, you, know, you can tell him what you want. You can say, God, the way my life is, why are you doing me like this? And God will say, how? How am I doing it? Say, but, you know, I don't understand. All of that, there's no crime. If it is in your closet, you and God, you are talking. Am I right? But do you know that if we came out here and we are praying, and I say, oh God, why are you treating me like this? Do you know that somebody will say, what's wrong with you? How can you talk to God like that? How can you be talking to God like that? So, Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. But you didn't love him. You really have a question to ask. But because you don't want people to think that you are, you are not spiritual, so you are changed. No. An altar of us. God wants you to be down to us. Be yourself. Because it is yourself that God wants to relate with, not with a dramatist. Do you understand that now? Eh? God does not want to relate with a dramatist. He wants to relate with you. How am I going to build my altar? I will build it at my level. I will not be Pretending to do what others are doing when it is my personal relationship with God. I say, God, you know I, I want to love you. I want to love you. But there is this boy that has captured my heart. Even though I didn't greet him for one week, but my heart is still there. Father, how will you uproot this boy from my heart so that I can love you with all my heart? Where is that prayer going on? In the closet. Is that a sincere prayer? No. Oh. God answers such prayers. God, I tell you, he answers prayer. We are not supermen. We are ordinary people that had issues to deal with. But because God brought us to that place where he makes men, he began to put his finger and say, Billy, this one, I don't want it again. He said, but Lord, you know, you know, well, you know I like it. I said, well, choose. Choose between me and that thing. If you want that, then you can go away. But if you want me, it has to go. 
Lord, 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 it's difficult, it's difficult, it's difficult. He said, yeah. oh, give me grace, give me grace to follow. Abundance grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Your grace is enough for you. Yes. When I beg for grace and he gave grace, I have grace to do what? To do away with it. Do you understand? I cannot forget one night when God confronted me. He said, Do you want to possess me? I said, Yes, Lord, I want to have you. He said, You cannot possess me and possess anything else. Hey. I said, God. He said, Yes. If you will possess God, you will possess nothing. It became a serious matter that night. I couldn't stop that discussion for five hours. And all God was demanding is that, look, you can no longer possess anything if you will have me. And the first thing that God was saying you cannot possess, you can no longer possess your certificate. Ah. Ah. Lord, you want to make me useless? Lord, no. Lord, Lord, can't I, can't I have it and have you? Say no. Ah. And that night, as I was struggling with God, I remember I said, Lord, and I sang that song. That song is in your hymn book here now. I love that. I sang that song. I don't know how many times. I sang it. I said, Lord, if you want to take the things which I prize most, I'll give it to you since it is your own. Only give me grace to be able to say that will be done. I remember when I finished that prayer and I did my hand like this as if I was saying, Lord, even my certificate, I lay it down. One piece just came on me. And I said, God said, yes, now you will have all that belongs to me will be yours. I said, hey, Lord, all that is mine is yours. I have had great promises of God on my life. But it doesn't come here. Where did they come from? In that secret place. So you do understand. So, so when I now finally got my certificate, my degree and all of that. Hmm. People were going for graduation. I got ready. I just knelt down to say, Father, I want you to grant me a safe journey. Bring me to the place and bring me back. He said, to where? Ah, I said, I'm going to collect my degree. He said, which degree? You gave it to me long ago. I said, oh, but hey, does that mean, does that mean? He said, no. He said, for this weekend, you know, there's a, there's a village outreach where you will carry me to go and preach. I said, you mean I will not wear academic gown? <laughs> you won't know how terrible it was not to wear academic gown. I was shivering as a God. God said, yes, but you told me. We settled it long ago. I said, yes, we settled it. We settled it. With tears. You know, sometime on your altar, we are shedding tears. With tears. Tears, as it not. Tears. Then I went to the village. Where to preach. We saw tremendous miracles. We saw things happen. 
People are coming back, Billy. We didn't see you at graduation. We didn't say, say well, it's true, it's true, it's true. I, I couldn't explain. They say, where did you go? Where did you go? <laughs> it's between me and him. Of course, I went eventually when it's time when he said, you can now go. I went. People were congratulating me. He said, but you missed the, 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 the pictures. Uh, you missed the ceremony. I said, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But I have gained something. But nobody can preach that to me on the pulpit. I don't see anybody who can stand on this pulpit and say, eh, on the day of your graduation, go and preach in the village. I will say, Get, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I can't agree. No. But what men cannot tell you on the pulpit? Right in your closet. Between you and God, that's where such issues are settled. And when he has, and you know, for me, I'm walking with God. God is my friend. We are building relationship for years. He's my friend, we have been going together. We are walking together. I'm walking with him. All the things he said to me. So one day I was going to to to, to buy something in the market because now I'm a worker and they, they pay me salary. I was going to spend salary and I went to the place to buy something you know, already priced. And the man had already written the invoice and the receipt. And it's for me just to give money. And I heard the man inside said, ah, Who told you to spend my money? I said, What? <laughs> Do you mean that I, I don't even also have right? He said, but we settled it now. Ah, I said, now, wow, Lord, what is all this? So I, I, I left the supermarket. I told him, I said, I'm sorry, I'll come back, I'll come back. I said, I said are, you, are, you, are, you, are you serious? Eh? If you knew you are not ready, why did you make me to write the invoice? I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I ran back to the close. I said, God, what is it? God, what is it? I locked it. I said, Lord, what is it? Tell me, what is the matter? What is the matter? Oh, God, can't I buy something by myself? Can't I buy something by myself? Oh, God. <laughs> God. And God said, did you ask me that you need a radio cassette? Did I not tell you that we worry for nothing. But with prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Have you told me? I said, must I tell you that? I have money to buy something. Must I need to ask you before? before? He said, who told you you have money? Who told you? You remember you said you surrendered all. I say yes, I surrender. But that does that mean I, I don't have a right to do anything by myself? Aha. Now this discussion cannot take place here. Nobody can preach that to me. Are you getting me? So I need I say, Father Lord, so God. I surrender. Yes, you say yes. I said, okay, but Lord, now, you know I need to be hearing uh, messages and music, and I need to take. He said, huh, you have just told me. Then I stood up. The prayer finished. I had peace. I said, God said, I will send you. Do you know the next thing? The next day, somebody brought me a very big the bigger size of the one I wanted to buy, the biggest size. He said, Raguli, I just bought this thing and as I was about to uh, put my tape in it, the Lord said, it's not for me. I shall carry it to you. And I... <laughs> oh, yeah. He put cassettes. All the music I wanted to be listening to, he went and bought it. And put it. And then they were testing it in my sitting room. The, the room was booming. 
into Guru. So I quickly went back. I said, God, God, you mean you have known this? Said, what I told you. I told you, I said, I don't. Then the next day, another person brought the one I wanted to buy. Brought it. He said, The Lord said, You need tape. And that this one, the big one will be in the sitting room, this one will be in your bedroom. Uh -uh. The following day, another one brought the smallest. <laughs> that one has touch light. He said, This one is for your traveling. When you go for retreat and you want to be listening to messages, you put it on, and when you are going through the bush and there's no light, you put on your touch light. So I went back to the close. I said, Brother, it is enough, Lord. It is enough, Lord. It is enough, Lord. You see, only when you have started to build an altar, personal altar, that's where personal issues are resolved. That's where all the secret things that will become the outworking of your life will be brought out. This preaching here, oh, believe God, believe God, it will be well with you. It's okay, but it's not good enough. It's only when I get in there and I'm hearing God say, Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I was praying, Lord, Lord, you are calling me. God is calling me to go and preach. Right? And I don't have even furniture to sit down. So one day I was praying, and the Lord said, All this furniture in this house, where you are staying, it's a government house. He said, The day I'm sending you out of this place, all this furniture will be your own. So don't worry about furniture. I said, this is government property. <laughs> How can government property become my property? Say, that's not your business. I have seen God work with me. But where does God do it? In that secret altar. It's to be built. I want you to have testimonies. But that's where we get testimonies. That's where testimonies come from. Are you with me? That's where God releases himself to a man. And he say, Give, make a place for me where I can be showing myself to you from time to time. You know, one of the crimes my heart is that I don't want to keep coming to South Africa. And you are just admiring us. Mm -mm. I want you yourself to walk into that experience and it is going to be unique and it's going to work for you and you are going to see the glory of God in the land of the living. You will build it. It's a building. Little by little. Little by little. Little by little. Little by little. That is where all the things God will want you to do for him. That's where he will be telling you. I see some of you going from one man of God to another. Hey, please tell me what God wants me to do. Tell me what God wants me to do. No. No one can tell you what God wants you to do. It is God himself. But he's been waiting. See, I don't know why Christine is going up and down. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> why she's going up and down. I'm waiting for her here. Where we can settle the matter. Can I read a passage to you? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now. Let us reason together. Who is talking there? Let us do what? What's the meaning of reasoning together? Eh? Let's, 
discuss. Let's discuss. Where is the living Bible? It says, come. Let's talk this over. Let's talk it over. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Can you imagine Baba? Almighty God is inviting me. Say, Billy, come. Let's talk it over. That's the kind of meeting point that we're talking about. Building an altar where you and God you are discussing things over. 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 There are many issues we have been talking over. Talking things over. It's very interesting. And you can build such an altar. Let's talk it over. Another one said, let's settle the matter. I think it's a good news. I say, come, let's settle the matter. Let's settle it. Let's discuss it. What's the matter? Let's talk it. I have seen God talking things over with me. And all that has now grown, that has now started moving in different parts of the world, I can remember, I can trace when we discussed it. Praise the Lord. So, I want you to know that this matter of building God an altar, building a relationship with God, creating a space where you and God sort issues out, it's something he wants you to do. Hallelujah. Mm. Young brothers, you want to marry Abby? Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a crisis period, isn't it? Sometime, three sisters are appearing flashy around you. Isn't it? And you are wondering, what, what do I do now? Eh? Rosie is just, just an aunt. And I don't know whether Okay. You know what God wanted? He wanted you to come. Let's discuss. In that place, you don't go there as on the other and say, Oh, God. Mm. Mm. No. Stop doing that. Tell God what is there. I say, Baba, Sister Rosie is looking something. What do you say about her? And then, Baba say yes. Concerning Rosie, she look nice. And if not because of what I want to do with you, you could have married her. But as you see her, she will not go far. There's another girl. Her name is Angelina. She's not very bright looking. <laughs> if you if you want to hear me very well, she's the one. Take away your eyes from Rosie and look on that side. You say, oh God, but I don't, I don't love her, I don't love her, I don't love her. The way she looks at she just looks somehow. And I say, yes. Yes. I, the Lord, I look not on the outward appearance. He will be speaking to you from scripture. And the discussion will be going on and on and on and on. Until the moment, you this will say, yeah, but that's, that's it. And by the time you are standing up, you know that you know that you know that God has spoken. If anybody say, how did you know? Oh, then you tell the story. Because on your personal altar, you settled it. 
Those who have no altar, God had nowhere to open up his heart to them. Altars are not ready made, they are built. There's no prototype for it. It is to be made of the earth. Don't make it of a hill stone. Don't look for ready-made, standardized. Don't come to God with some original language. Come just as you are. Am I sure that this meeting will produce men and women who are building altars to God? Eh? Look, if you, if you do it, by the next year, we will not be at this level. In fact, several of you will come and say, Sir, you know, when I do it on my altar, I, I discuss with God over this issue, and this is what God told me. God told me to do this. God told me to do this. God led me to this. And it will be outstanding. Things will be coming to pass. People will say, Are you a prophet? Are you a prophet? That's where God makes prophets. That's where God reveals the secret that will happen. Sometime he reveals it. It is from there we get messages to preach. Are you hearing me? It's from there. Oh. Hmm. It's wonderful. I want to go. I want you to come with me there. The hunger in my heart this afternoon, I want to see young people introduced to the altar. I want to see young brothers who are men of the altar. I want to see sisters that you can't just mess up around them. Because right on the altar, God already told them, Say, brother, Samuel is coming. I have not sent him. <laughs> he is going to come with a, a carry-on bag containing head tie and some biscuits. He is not my man. Don't take it. And surely Samuel will come. And as that Samuel is entering, the sister who had been on the altar said, Welcome, Brother Sam. How are you? I was told that you are coming. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and actually, I saw this, uh, this leather bag that you are carrying. I saw it. But just before, uh, because I asked God, what is it for? The Lord told me that that bag you are bringing, I must not take it from you. Because your motive is not right. <laughs> you know someone will shiver. Say, cry. Say that, that sister is very tough. Very tough. Yes. Where we produce tough sisters is on the altar. You can't deceive them. And you see that. I have met some sisters and they made me afraid. Mm. And I said, you know, I don't know what happened. I cried all night one day because I was struggling with something with God and I was totally discouraged. Only for me to come out. And as I came out of my, my hostel, I was going. I met that sister. And the sister came and said, Rabile, throughout this night you didn't sleep. I said, how did you know? He said, I was watching you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> eh? You were watching? How? said, the Lord laid your body on my heart. So I prayed all night. And the Lord said, I should tell you. Don't be afraid. 
that body will not crush you. Go and obey me. I don't know what you and God were struggling with, but I prayed with you. I prayed for you all night. And I will be praying for you. God bless you. Ah! I say, my God. So there are sisters here. That when some of us are struggling somewhere, they are seeing us. <laughs> you know, you see, they affected my life so much. You see, what makes a man of God is not arbitrary. It's on the altar. It's on the altar. That's where God makes men. And we are going to pray together before we break. I want God to pour upon you the spirit of prayer. When will I graduate from building my altar? Let me inform you. Altar as a relationship with God is to be built till I get to heaven. This day you are starting now. You will build it until you get to heaven. I can tell you history, story of 40 years of a continuous altar I've been building with God, but it hasn't finished. Yesterday night, as uh, uh, I was watching that drama, I wept throughout. I was just weeping. I said, Lord, when I saw that sister who is now amputated and somebody is pushing her to preach the gospel, oh, I said, God, God, God. Whatever will amputate me. You are seeing a physical amputation. But I saw many things that can amputate a man of God. There are many men of God with their two legs walking up and down like this, but they are amputees. They are amputees. So I say, God, those things that amputate men. And instead of them running, somebody had to be pushing them like a wheelbarrow. It must not come my way. And then there and there. It's just because you you are busy praying your prayer. I was busy praying my own prayer. I was there on my knees, opening my Bible. And I hear God say to me, unto God, who is able to keep you from falling? from sleeping, from from faulting, from being faulty. I said, Lord, you will keep me. You are promising me. He said, yes. You will not fail. You will not become history in your lifetime. That, me and God, we said to that here again in this small place of Tata. You will build this altar until you get to heaven. No man had grows it. Preaching does not take you out of it. Big ministry does not take you out of it. That is your own personal relationship with God. And he said, give me a space. Let me relate with you. Let's build a relationship. Let's build an altar that me and you can walk together until I take you to heaven. That's what I'm hearing God say. I want to do that for myself all the day. I want to renew my altar. I want to say, Lord, I have built it before, but I want to build it again. You have done great things with me on my altar before, but I need something more. I need something more. That's where clarity comes. What to do with this uh, student congress? Are you hearing me? Yesterday. I need that as a God. Look at these students. What is the next thing for us to do? What is the next thing you want us to do? I'm sitting there and talking. I'm saying, Lord. And God began to say, yes. And when we come in the evening, and I begin to tell you, what is the next stage? Which will come to pass. Because when God speaks like that, it normally will come to pass. Huh? But we don't get it from the sky. Are you getting me? Where do we get it? From our own altar. 
Will you go there? So this evening, I mean this afternoon, you're going to join me in prayer. Now, things that hinder altar, number one, sin. Listen, a sinning man will stop praying. A praying man will stop sinning. The reason is because sin and pray they are mutually exclusive. Don't go together. So when God is asking me to build an altar, He simply say, consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. Me and you, we want to be friends. I want to be your friend. Ah! When God spoke and said, Abraham, my friend. I said, hmm. Abraham has grown to become God's friend. What of me, oh God? Will you be able to speak about me? And say, Billy, my friend. My friend. My friend. But I know, like I told, that that's our sister explained to us. Friendships are built. Abi, it should be built. If you want to build friendship with Jesus, we can start today. And so, this afternoon, we are getting to the place of prayer. And the prayer is going to, it will be the beginning of our altar. Amen. And we are not going to be fussy about it. We are not going to pray and see we are praying for people here. Each one of you, you will just take any good position you like. You want to kneel down. You want to sit on the floor. You want to stand there. You want to hang there. Say, Lord, I've had you now. And today is the thirtieth, Abby. This is the last day of June. What a day to mark. I say, Father, I had a very elaborate discussion that you want me to build an altar for you. You want me to create a platform where me and you can discuss regularly. Lord, let us start it. Let's agree. Tell God, I want us to agree together. I want to create this space. I want to create this time. I want to look for this closet. Some of you are already looking. Where can I? Where will I? Where will I do it? You already started seeing some corners in your house. That you are going to go and cry immediately and say, I just want to put my 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 my, my small chair here where we sit and we go. And I want to do it regularly. We will start it this afternoon. The next 15 minutes, that's what we are going to do. Hallelujah. And your discussion, listen. Some have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, so they speak in tongues. But some of us were not baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that has been a matter. You say, Baba, I don't know how these people they speak in tongues. I don't know how to say anything. But I know you said I will also be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm here. As you are discussing, oh my God, you will see God. I promise you, you will see the glory of God in the land of the living. If you want, we can go together. If you desire it, God himself says, I will come down there. You don't need to be doing like this. I will come there. Just give me a platform at your level. Let's do it together. Do you want us to do it together? Eh? And we read the scripture that says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. He is here. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus is here. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Now take your position. Turn to God anyhow. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God is here. 